So, um, in response to a production order or documents motion here at the committee around Ms. Vacheron's uh, appointment, uh, PCO, as, as the witnesses referenced, has provided documents, and there's 107 pages, pages 12 to 30, pages 48 to 66, pages 78 to 84, page 97 to 103. Uh, are in total 41 pages. You can see them here in the, all the yellow stickies were redacted. They were redacted, which seems to be a PCO habit these days. Can you tell me who told you to redact these pages? Mr. Chair, as I, I noted from the outset, as public servants, we are obligated under the Privacy Act to protect personal information. That said, I would just really emphasize for the committee that we have taken some very exceptional measures to provide as much information as possible to strike a very delicate balance of giving the committee the information that they need to do their work while respecting the personal information of the individuals who were qualified for the various processes. Um, and I would just say above and beyond that, we also um, had but, sought Ms. Vershuren's agreement to provide but, but details for her appointment. But that wasn't my question. Who... who who authorized or said that these pages should be redacted in PCO? Mr. Chair, we, um, we operate under the auspices of the Privacy Act, and we would have gone through the pages ourselves. Uh, my team would have looked and applied the Privacy Act. If we had any questions, we would have consulted with our legal counsel. As the Department of the Prime Minister's Office, did the Prime Minister's Office review this before it was released? Not to my knowledge, Mr. Chair, uh, if, if they had an opportunity, not, not from our office, they wouldn't have reviewed it, no. Uh, will you table with the committee all the emails within PCO and PMO with regard to, with this committee, with regard to what should be done with these documents before it was tabled in committee? I'm, I'm not quite sure I understand the question, but... Well, you um, would have had lots of communication, email back and forth when you got the stack of documents about what to redact and hide from the committee and what not to. So will you table those emails with the committee? We'll, we'll endeavor to see if we have any records uh, on hand that could be helpful in, in that work, for sure. Okay, so, you know, it's really hard to get at the details of this thing because, of course, Mr. Fisheron ta uh, testified... And the first answer is usually the correct answer. She testified three times that she has not applied for anything in her life and that Minister Baines called her twice before that. And a week later, she wrote a letter saying, of course, she applied. Uh, and I suspect she applied after she had had the two calls from Minister Baines. So does anything that you've redacted here deal with the issue of Minister Baines' phone calls to Ms. Vacheron to talk about taking this on to the job she didn't apply for? Mr. Chair, we have provided the information as requested, so that would include the advice letter. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the advice letters that were requested, um, it would also contain personal information about the applicants. Um, I, I would just underscore that we did note in our letter back that we didn't have any documents that had any transaction uh, to, the, to the member's question between ourselves uh, and the minister or the minister's office or the prime minister's office, for that matter, on her application or uh, any further details. So I, I, you're obviously aware, the witness is obviously aware that uh, we've been now three weeks dealing with uh, in the House with a privilege motion of the breach of privilege of the House order for documents related to SDTC from every government department, which did not say censor them, redact them. But the, uh, the government has redacted uh, quite a few, uh, including PCO is on the list. So... If these docu documents were provided to the law clerk, were they provided in this form, redacted? Yes, Mr. Chair. Sorry, sorry, sorry about that. Yes, Mr. Chair, we would have provided exactly the same redactions to the package that we would have provided to the law clerk, and we would so be consistent is, with the law. This is the list from the law clerk of the latest redacted departments versus the ones that didn't redact. There's a small list of didn't redact and a long list of did and a couple of agencies here that have actually refused to comply. So what I'd like to know, because you're part of the Privy Council team, is who in the Privy Council office made the decision to send the order out to the go to government departments saying, 
We want you to filter the House of Commons request through the Privacy Act and the Access to Information Act. The, that filter, which was not part of the House's motion and is the, the point that we're discussing for the last three weeks in the House. Who made that decision to send that filter out? Mr. Chair, I, I wouldn't really be in a position to, to answer that. I, 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 my assumption was I was here today to, to discuss the appointment. Um, I guess to, to try to be as helpful as I can be on this point, we would apply the legislation, the act, uh, I, I, I to, to, to our that, redactions. I appreciate that, but that's not what the House order was. So I'd like you to Ms. please point of order, Mr. with Chair? the committee. Point of order? Uh, just one second, Mr. Perkins, yes. Again, the, 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 I respect my honorable colleague, who himself was a government and council appointment before this time, is asking questions that the witness is clearly not able to answer and not her responsibility, so, and Mr. he's asking... Okay, a, Mr. Drain, you are up in just a... Yeah, but I'm just saying, bit, have but, a little but, respect for witnesses, and maybe we can get somewhere. The witness is actually... A respect the, okay, for your colleagues the, in the uh, Gentlemen, the... the, the I'll, I'll, I'll Mr. 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 Drain, Mr. Drain, you are up There's next. Anybody. Uh, the witnesses are being quite forthcoming. I'm in the phone book. Um, uh, Ms. McClemouth is, is answering questions. Okay, gentlemen. They do in Nova Scotia. Okay, Mr. Tell Perkins, you you you're not helping as well, Mr. Perkins. The floor is going to be yours in a second. I'm going to turn it back over. You have a little bit of time left, and then we'll go to Mr. Mr. Uh But the, the witness is, is not being um, uh, maltreated here, is responding to the best of her ability in my opinion is, is being as forthcoming uh, and, and I recognize Mr. Perkins is probing, which is his right to do. So Mr. Perkins, um, I don't know if, if you want me to go right, right to the witness because you've only got about 20 seconds left or, or do you want a little yeah. bit of time? All right, you've got time for, to finish your questions and then we'll hear from the witness. Thank you. Will you table with this committee the person in PCO and PMO that sent out the order to say redact the documents on these two acts? Could you table that name with this committee please at some point? Yes, unfortunately, I don't. I don't have that in front of me. I wasn't prepared to speak to that today. Future. But we will go back and check with our our colleagues and do our best to get it to the committee Thank as you. quickly as possible. 